Hey friends, I'm Andy. How you doing? Good to see you. I've reviewed quite a few fintech companies and banks on this channel. I've also talked a lot about investing your money. So for this video, I'm going to combine the two and talk about my top fintech stocks to consider in 2021. Now let me start this off by saying that I am not a stock trader. I'm not the guy who buys and sells on the short term. Day trading with my broskies, if you know what I mean. I might try that at some point, but right now I'm a buy and hold investor. So I'm viewing all my stock picks through the lens of long-term investing, which if I may say so, is a fine way to do it. Really nice. Huh? So why do I think you should consider FinTech as an investment? Well, I thought about this question myself recently while I was reading CNBC and I saw an article posted about JP Morgan Chase's CEO, Jamie Dimon. He was asked about the threat of FinTech companies and he responded, absolutely, we should be scared shitless about that. And they should be scared. FinTech companies are high on innovation and features. They're also very nimble and lightweight. Making big changes at Chase or Wells Fargo is like steering a giant cargo ship. It'd be very purposeful in your big, slow, lumbering moves. Whereas the FinTech companies can make changes on the fly and aggressively pursue competitive edge. Right on the edge of competition. A great example of this lightweightness is looking at the cost to acquire new customers. Wells Fargo and Chase and other retail banks spend between $350 to $1,500 to acquire new customers, or $925 on average. In 2018, Wells Fargo spent almost $1.6 billion on their advertising and promotion of their checking accounts, which resulted in an acquisition cost of about $600 per new customer. That's a lot of moolah. <laughs> that is a lot of guacamole. A lot of the green. Let's contrast this with the fintech companies. Square, who have created the Cash App, in 2018 spent less than $20 in acquisition of each new user. Many fintech companies like the neobanks, Chime, SoFi, etc., have even more advantages like no brick and mortar locations. These result in huge overheads for the big banks and those costs are passed along to the customer. Whereas there's no such cost pass alonging for fintech. These are just a couple of examples of how fintech can operate differently than traditional banking. For these reasons and many more, I think fintech will continue to be a major disruptive force in the finance space. Disruption and innovation can bring along with it lots of investing upside. Come along with me, disruption. This is a big reason why you might want to consider investing in fintech. If you do decide to invest in fintech, then you won't be the only one. There are tons of companies, funds, and investors putting their money in this space. Speaking of, first on my list is the ARK Fintech Innovation ETF. ARK Invest, an asset management company, has built an entire ETF, or exchange traded fund, around Fintech. The ARK F ETF focuses on a few areas of Fintech. Digital wallets, blockchain technology, mobile payments, lending, risk transformation, artificial intelligence, and e-commerce. Some of the biggest holdings in this ETF are Square, Tencent, Zillow, Pinterest, and PayPal some names you might recognize. They currently manage just under $2 billion in assets in the fund. They're aiming to provide exposure to fintech innovations that could revolutionize the financial industry and possibly even impact every sector of the global economy. I have ARK F at the top of my list because I think an ETF is a great way to dip your toes into investing. I also think this about index funds. I like ETFs because you can invest in one fund, but actually be invested across a bunch of companies. So instead of telling people you're a part owner of Apple, you can tell them you're a part owner of 52 different companies. Impressive. Also, I think ARK Invest themselves are doing an amazing job with their funds. ARK F currently has a one year return of 108%, which is wild. The team at ARK led by CEO Kathy Wood have been doing a phenomenal job with their ETFs. I think there are some very exciting things coming from ARK. The long-term potential of these funds could be massive. Next on my list is the Global X FinTech ETF. If the rapid growth of ARK is a little scary, or if you just aren't ready to invest in the newer kid on the block, then FinX could be a great fit. This is one of the most established FinTech ETFs. Global X looks for investments in companies that are on the leading edge of the emerging financial technology sector. This includes a variety of innovations that are transforming industries like insurance, investing, fundraising, and lending. They're currently managing about 1.1 billion in assets in this fund. Their one year return has been 53%. While not as flashy as ARK's 108%, it is still a very impressive number. A few of their top holdings in this fund are Square, PayPal, Intuit, and Xero. You might notice a trend here with the Square and PayPal. They look for and hold investments that have high growth potential. They do this through what they call an unconstrained approach, where they track emerging themes versus traditional indicators. Their performance numbers aren't as high as ARC's, but again, 
they are a bit more established if that matters to you, and 53% is still a huge number. Either or both ETFs could be a really solid choice for you if you would rather invest in a large number of fintech companies instead of individual stocks. These are also great because they have teams of very smart people managing what investments are made within the fund, so you don't have to worry about that yourself. Why put that burden on yourself? Let someone else handle it. Before I move on to individual companies, if you have found this info helpful so far, please invest in me by clicking that like button and subscribing to my channel where I talk about all things money. I'd love it if you stuck around. Okay, moving on to a few individual company stocks. Next on my list is PayPal. Now, right away before I get into this one, let me say I don't love using PayPal. They've had their share of issues and problems and can often be unpleasant to deal with. However, everyone knows PayPal. They are giant and they are used worldwide. PayPal payments are everywhere and people and companies use them every single day to send and receive payments. They are the go-to name when it comes to sending and receiving money. Because of this, I think they will continue to grow in size and value in the future. One of the biggest reasons I'm looking at PayPal for the long term is that just a few months ago, they brought cryptocurrencies onto their platform. You can now buy and sell some cryptocurrencies through PayPal. Now this is really big news, especially since Bitcoin has absolutely exploded in the same time period. When it was first announced that PayPal would be supporting buying and selling of certain cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin was at roughly $13,000 USD. Now, just a few short months later, Bitcoin is over $30,000. The success of Bitcoin can be a massive factor in the continued success of PayPal. This is even more true when you consider that they plan to enable payments with cryptocurrencies everywhere that PayPal is currently accepted. This would be massive for global adoption of crypto and would be huge for PayPal. I think PayPal will continue to grow and innovate in the space and that they are likely to be a solid long-term pick. Next on the list is Square. Jack Dorsey, co-founder and CEO of Twitter is the founder and CEO of Square. Square is most well known for creating the Cash App, which is a mobile payments app for sending person-to-person -person payments quickly and easily. Cash App is also a great looking and super easy to use app. You can be up and running with the app very quickly. This is very important because that means people downloading, using the app and becoming customers is super easy. In 2020, Cash App had 30 million customers. This is up from 2019 when they had 24 million and up from 2018 when they had just 15 million. I don't know why I said just, that's a lot of people. Along with the user growth, their revenue has grown over 140% year over year and profit has blown up to 212% year over year with their 2020 Q3 profit being $385 billion. Along with amazing growth and a great product, in the past two years, they have added support for buying stocks and buying Bitcoin. Now, along with sending cash person to person, you can buy stocks and Bitcoin directly in the app in seconds. This is now a funnel for even more users and growth. Given the amazing growth of their profits and their incredibly low cost customer acquisition, I think Square is a solid company to think about investing in. To end my list, I want to talk about the SoFi IPO. In case you don't know, IPO stands for Initial Public Offering. When a company goes public, you're able to buy their stocks. SoFi is a fintech neobank. They are one of the biggest and most popular fintech banks. They are currently a private company, but they will be going public most likely in the first quarter of 2021, which is right now, via a SPAC. If you don't know what that means, I'll give you the short explanation. SPAC, S-P-A-C, stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. Basically, SoFi will be using another company to go public. The other company's only purpose is to take other companies public. I-P-O-E is the ticker symbol for the SPAC. Investing in this company will be an investment in SoFi when they make the transition from private to public. The shares you own of IPOE will automatically convert over to SoFi shares after the merger is complete. SoFi is a very popular and fully featured fintech bank. Now I haven't reviewed them myself on my channel yet, but they get very favorable reviews on other channels. They are growing quickly and offer a very competitive feature set. I think SoFi could be a great long-term investment. Another worthwhile note here is that the SPAC that is being used for SoFi to go public is backed by Chamath Palihapitiya, who is an incredibly successful investor. His companies have gone extremely well and his SPACs have been doing great too. So if you are looking to directly invest into a fintech bank, this could be a great opportunity to do so. Since the IPO is happening very soon and the SPAC has already been announced and is available to invest in. Okay, that wraps up my top fintech picks for this video. There are many others I could have talked about, but these are some of the highest level ones that I'm personally excited about and think have a great long-term outlook. If you invest in fintech, what did I miss? Or what would you put on this list? Let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.